Hey guys, let's do a quick uh, video on the Americas. I'm going to talk about the Olmecs, Incas, Mayans, and Aztecs. So this is a map of uh, Mexico, and uh, or modern day Mexico, uh, as well as Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, and uh, Belize, and it's kind of giving us a general idea of where some of these different empires existed. Uh, also, uh, in South America is where you'll find the majority of the Incan Empire. So we start with the Olmecs. Uh, they are they are the longest and the oldest of these empires. Uh, they started roughly 1500 BC uh, and lasted until about 400 BC. So that's an 800 year long empire, which is pretty impressive. Uh, they were uh, there's a lot unknown about them. Uh, a lot, I mean, as you can imagine, a lot of their history was destroyed when they were taken over. Um, they were big producers of food. They built a trade empire. Um, and it was used to trade their food for materials that they did not have in their territory. Uh, they relied heavily on river trade, but eventually the Mayan would uh, overtake this, uh, these trade routes. So next up are the Inca. Uh, you may know Machu Picchu over here in the corner, a uh, very well-known site. Um, so the, the Inca were a group from roughly 1438 to 1538-ish. Uh, they did not have a written uh, writing form, which was very interesting. They had this thing called kipu, which were knots in a rope, which had a numerical value attached to it. Uh, so you could tell entire stories in these ropes. Um, they did, however, uh, also have very high level of technology in their fiber working. They created bridges, huge suspension bridges that went over gorges, and boats that could go out into the ocean. Um, they also had freeze-dried food, which is very interesting. Um, they were a mountain-based empire, possibly the largest in the world at the time. Uh, they relied on terrace farming, which is when you uh, build your uh, farms into the side of mountains and you build little retaining walls all the way down, as you can kind of see in this picture. Uh, and their downfall was a combination of smallpox, uh, internal civil war, and uh, Spanish invasion. So the next up are the Maya, who are my favorite. Uh, they were not a centralized empire. It was kind of a loose confederation. Uh, they have some very interesting leaders that uh, I would suggest you guys looking up if you're interested. There's a video linked in the name. Um, they relied on what's called slash and burn farming, which is where you allow uh, a forest to grow up. You burn it down, then you plant food there, um, and then you once that soil is no longer usable, you allow the forest to come back in and you repeat the process after proper nutrients has been returned to the soil. Uh, very interesting uh, for places that don't have uh, soil of high quality. Uh, they had this belief that the world was cycl cyclical, so life uh, eventually created death and that therefore created additional life. Uh, they have a very sophisticated uh, math um, uh, in the society, so they had their, a zero and uh, that would allow them to do very complex equations, very high level math going on. Uh, they also created the golden mean, or they had established and uh, also uh, discovered the golden mean, because I know this is a, something that existed in Europe at the time also, which is this idea that uh, there's a ratio of everything on the planet, uh, one to, to 618. And um, you should really look into that if you're interested in it. They had very big uh, engineering uh, feats that were created. They had columns, uh, uh, independence columns, uh, like round columns, similar to the to uh, the Romans. They had a uh, water pressure where they had these underground aqueducts that uh, had slowly tapered piping, which would increase the pressure to allow them to have fountains and other uh, uh, and and to, to flow water uphill. Uh, they had a high tech road network. With, uh, which was raised above the ground, was perfectly straight for up to 60 miles in some cases, and it was covered in this white, smooth stucco, so it was easily to, easy to walk on. Um, con the, a lot of these building complexes are built around calendars, astronomical um, types of, of, uh, of feats. They have like uh, El Casillo, which is really cool. It's got a calendar built, built into the side with a serpent, and the shadows that are cast by the sun in the morning uh, show you um, what month it is and what time of the year. There's also this Temple of Inscriptions, uh, which is another complex which has this round uh, tower on top with windows uh, 
mathematically placed in order to observe uh, star movement. Very high, high tech stuff done a long time ago. Um, so they had a fall roughly in the ninth century, possibly from water pollution, disease, it's not really known. Uh, they, you know, they reestablished themselves, but not to this, this, uh, this same level as before. And in 1517, the Spanish invade. Because of this decentralization, the Spanish actually could not take them out as easy as we're going to hear about in a minute about the Aztecs. Uh, they actually had a diff difficult time uh, combating these different groups because whenever they would take out one, they would have more that they would have to then face. Um, you would see uh, a lot of disease eventually kill these people out, and the Spanish would pretty much burn their history. Uh, so uh, the Spanish miss missionaries thinking that the work of the Maya was of the devil. So now we're going to go into the Aztec, probably one of the more uh, highly known groups from South America. They were actually a relatively short-lived empire, rather new. They existed roughly from 1428 until the, uh, the Spanish showed up in 1521. Um, so they have a written language uh, and written numbers. The language is uh, syllabic, which is very interesting. Uh, the text that we have remaining from them is um, uh, about dynastic accounts. Uh, the capital was, and I'm not going to say this right, but uh, Tetancutlan, and it is what modern-day Mexico is. Uh, if you look on the Mexican flag, you will see an eagle eating a serpent, and that is what was symbolizing as this, uh, what the, the, the wonders that founded the Aztec culture uh, that's what the gods were sending to them to show that that's where they should build their city. And it adorns Mexico's flag today. Uh, they had very big engineering feats. Uh, not only did they build a entire city in the middle of a, of a lake, uh, and they used this very high-tech uh, method of uh, pounding uh, wooden um, pylons into the ground to build huge structures on top of, like, very unsturdy ground. Um, they also had these things called chanupa, which were these little woven stick islands with, muds on, with mud on top, which they grew their food, and it actually gave them a food surplus. Um, they had a 10-mile-long, 12-foot-tall, 27-foot-wide dike around this entire complex, which kind of separated the, the, uh, the pure water from the salt water. Uh, and in that dike, they had water relief gates, which they could open and close to, uh, to, to, to dictate the amount of water that went into the area to keep it clean, and other other uses. Uh, they had this very sophisticated system of uh, of sending messages using relay runners, which were set up in intervals along a road, which gave them very fast communication, actually much faster than the communication systems anywhere else in the world at the time. Uh, actually faster than today's modern day um, uh, mail system, but it was not as vast and did not uh, did not work with but so many people. Um, they had this aqueduct system, which was very interesting, using two separate uh, channels that ran beside each other. One of them had clean water. One of them had uh, just norm normal water that was coming out of the mountains to prevent the water from, um, from ever being interrupted. Very high-tech stuff. They also had this aqueduct system at a specific uh, uh, temple, or not a temple, but a... a um, like a, a luxury complex where the king went and the king had planted all these flowers all over the place. He had a bath in, in this complex. And this aqueduct not only fed his bath, but it also watered all these plants. So it was kind of like one of the earliest sprinkler systems. Um, they played a game called uh, Pukatoke, which is a picture right here, which is kind of a combination between soccer and basketball. Um, this was a military central empire. It relied on a strong military, mainly of jaguar warriors and eagle warriors. There's a great history, which is available in this video here, which goes into all the details associated with that. <clears throat> uh, also, they, were, they had a lot of sacrifices in this culture. So they killed a lot of people uh, thinking that blood was kind of like the, uh, the most precious thing on the planet. Now, a quick story, Montezuma versus Cortez. It's totally worth just looking it up this, this story. Uh, very long story short, a comet flies over the capital. Uh, Montezuma becomes paranoid, seeing this is possibly the end of the world. Shortly after, Cortez shows up on these things called floating mountains, according to the Aztecs, which were just the Spanish ships. 
Uh, the Spanish started creating a coalition of Anna and, and Z- Aztec tribes, um, marrying one of the daughters of one of these tribes, who pretty much becomes this like double agent who would uh, translate all the the information from the locals to uh, Cortez, kind of giving giving him a heads up of what people were saying about him, thinking that the Spanish could not understand them. Um, the Spanish were invited um, to the capital by Cortez. Or, uh, sorry, by uh, Montezuma, uh, and they stayed there as his guest. But uh, the the Spanish were pretty tricky and kidnapped Montezuma. Um, this really, uh, and he used Montezuma kind of, uh, the Spanish used Montezuma to, to get gold and other things. Uh, and the, the, the Aztecs didn't like this, and uh, they eventually rebelled. And uh, it, it's still disputed whether the Spanish killed Montezuma or if actually the, the Aztec people, uh, because when they were uh, rebelling, they were throwing stones at him. Um, so they were either attempting to kill him or the Spanish actually did, seeing that he was no longer useful to them. <clears throat> the Spanish decided to flee the city, and many of them died, roughly 400 on a causeway that connected, uh, this massive causeway that connected the main island complex to the shore. Um, and they died because they had too much stuff. They were looted down, they tried to jump in the water, and they died from, from drowning. Um, then uh, the Spanish, uh, because Cortez did survive, he came back with more Spanish and other tribes uh, that were accompanying uh, the Spanish. And they, uh, they, distorted, they saged the capital, they destroyed the aqueduct system, they, uh, they actually disassembled their ships, marched them through the mountains on top of this mountain, Reassembled, reassembled them in the lake, and then created a, a lake blockade of the capital. Um, it eventually all came to a major battle on the causeway, uh, and the Spanish fought block by block over a series of weeks to, to pretty much kill off all Aztecs that were left. Uh, roughly 20 million would die from disease uh, also. from. So a fun fact also is that the uh, Spanish, uh, this, this influx of gold from... Uh, the Americas uh, pretty much created rampant inflation in Spain and caused the demise of their economy. So a recap, we have the Olmecs, which were the oldest group that we talked about, very mysterious. We have the Inca, which possibly had the largest empire of the world at the time. The Maya, who were not one empire, but a, a group of people with similar mindsets. And the Aztecs, which were a military empire, specifically uh, the Cortez versus Montezuma story, pretty important. All right, guys. Thanks for listening.